Thank you for giving me a moment of time to share. My name is Karen Meyer. I've worked for NASA Education for over 20 years, first working for NASA's Extreme Ultraviolet Violet Explorer mission fresh out of college, then getting involved in SMD's education work shortly thereafter, and was a member of CSEF, the CSEF team for more than a decade. My current projects include the um, MAVEN mission and a ROSES Helio project called Energy from the Sun. I actually stumbled into project management in the NASA science context, but I consider one of the greatest gifts of my life to have worked alongside so many of you for so many years. You are an incredibly gifted, giving, smart, inspiring group of people. At a recent MAVEN team call just last week, I had a brief moment of insanity where I thought I would be at the retreat with you all. I'll tell you why that was an insane thought. Three weeks ago, I was working at UC Berkeley's open house, timing our first set of visitors on a newly created spacecraft challenge game, and I suddenly had a grand mal seizure. Shortly thereafter, I was diagnosed with brain cancer, and I'm now under the best medical care at UC UCSF's Brain Tumor Center, getting lots of tests, including MR spectroscopy, and my ears perked up when the um, neuro-oncologist mentioned spectroscopy. I will share more about that in the coming days. There's nothing like having a sudden diagnosis of stage three brain cancer to bring into sharp clarity the things that really matter to me. These things are my Christian faith, loving others, having truly authentic relationships, and courage. And in the vein of being courageous, I've always wanted to explore the intersections of faith, science, and science education, and now I'm going for that wholeheartedly. Um, Darlene Yan, who's a coworker of mine at, at SSL and part of the CSEF team, used a metaphor to liken the space that can commonly stand between science and faith to a demilitarized zone, or the DMZ. Faith can lie on one side while science on the other. Her metaphor fits in some ways to me because a DMZ is like a frontier or boundary between two or more powers where peace is enforced. I imagine a DMZ to be a place of heightened tensions, uneasy truces, and unspoken disagreements. For those who prefer to stay securely on their own side, including me, before this happened, the space and safety of a DMZ must be of great comfort. There are, among, there are those among us who suggest there are deficits in the way we do Western science, the way we seek to isolate it from culture, relationship, community, and faith. And I just want to take a moment to honor those who began those conversations, and sometimes at great personal cost. Many of those speaking on diversity at this retreat, including Dr. Nancy Maryboy, Dr. David Begay, Dr. Laura Petacolis, and Dr. Isabel Hawkins, who's not there but was really a front runner, these folks have courageously forged a place to begin some of these discussions. Western trained scientists and science educators are also courageously stepping into these conversations. They too have a lot to lose by crossing the DMZ and I respect them for stepping in. And now I'd like to say a word of encouragement to those of you who share my Christian faith. I'm going to read from one of my heroes, C.S. Lewis, who was a professor at Oxford University during the early 20th century, a novelist, a coward, yet someone who returned to his Anglican faith and thoughtfully and eventually courageously spoke on matters of faith within the academic context. I'm sorry that his language is directed toward men, but I'm not going to edit C.S. Lewis. If you asked 20 good men today what they thought the highest of the virtues, 19 of them would reply unselfishness. But if you asked almost any of the great Christians of old, he would have replied love. You see what has happened. A negative term has been substituted for a positive, and this is of more than philological importance. The negative ideal of unselfishness carries with it the suggestion, not primarily of securing good things for others, but of going without them ourselves, as if our abstinence and not their happiness was the important point. I do not think this is the Christian virtue of love. The New Testament has lots to say about self-denial, but not about self-denial as an end in itself. We're told to deny ourselves, take up our crosses in order that we may follow Christ. And nearly every description of what we shall ultimately find if we do so contains an appeal to desire. 
If there lurks in most modern minds the notion that, our de that to desire our own good and earnestly hope for the enjoyment of it is a bad thing, I submit that this notion has crept in from others and is no part of the Christian faith. Indeed, if we consider the unblushing promises of reward and the staggering nature of, of the rewards promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord Jesus finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us, like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he can't imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. I want to invite us persons of faith, and particularly Christians, to be courageous and humble and strongly enter into this dialogue. We have maybe a lot to lose. My fears of what it would cost me certainly kept me silent or in whispers for a lot of years. Others have a lot to lose too, though, and they have stepped in with courage. My question for all of us here today is, are we called to protect our reputations or courageously pursue truth? Finally, I recognize that many of us cannot neatly divide ourselves up into categories of faith, scientists, and science educators. Many of you already integrate and accept all aspects of who you are and live with those internal tensions. I am just starting this journey. I feel inside of me a deep fascination with the natural world, a respect for the ways scientists figure things out, a passion for science education, and yet a love of Jesus whose ways are mysterious and wildly beyond what I can possibly comprehend. And in the past, this has been a source of much of my vocational angst. In these few short weeks, God suddenly seems to be weaving together all the strands of who I am. I know that some of you share my faith, others do not. And all I'd like to ask is that you be authentic, courageously stepping into the pursuit of truth. I look forward to being a part of these conversations. Thank you.